That should be rolling. You got the coffee mug trying to look legit. Boys, boys, boys. <laughs> boys and girls, welcome back to our... Is it, what episode is it? Fuck no, 76. 77? 77. We're, we're losing like track that. at this point, but... What a fucking person to have on for our <laughs> show today. Beautiful location, Indian Beach Hotel. Alex Hayes, mate, thank you so much for coming on. Cheers for having me, boys. <laughs> it's so funny. We were talking that much shit the past like half an hour. I'm like, boys, I need to leave this fucking room. So we have <laughs> shit to talk about. Well, it's yep. a perfect vibe right now. You've got your mates in there. We've like we've just met them, but we already just seem like friends, mate. Yeah, it's just fully. a perfect environment. We just met. I've just flown in from like straight from the airport here. Like, we're playing at this this sick party in like an hour. We're trying to fit it all in. No, it's, it's, it's hectic, but it's... I, I love, love it. How do you feel? I, this is actually pretty <laughs> surreal because we'll get into it, but when I first found out about you, like, it was because... I may as well say it now. My ex-girlfriend, mm-hmm. when I was 16... Oh, so what's this story going to be? I was, I'm 23. 22. Basically 22. 23 now. So this was like eight, seven years ago. This was when you probably had like 20,000, 30,000 followers on Insta. And um, my ex-girlfriend was obsessed with you. And I was like, I, I was pissed off. I was like, what? Like, whatever. And she was like, why does it matter? You're never going to meet him. Like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> Came full that's circle, bro. It. It's that's actually so wild. Cool. Like, no, but it's, that's, that's, that's happened. Yeah. Come full circle. It's honestly so good to meet you because like you, people like yourself align with us perfectly. Perfectly. And those types of people don't come around every, every day, do they? Nah. Like, it's, it's a beautiful vibe. Uh, what time are you DJing? Is it... F- Four? Yeah, four. Four, and then so you managed to get in as well. Yeah, we're going to play a little back-to-back here. Yeah, back-to-back which will be Which will be <laughs> fun be for me. Because I've only been doing, like, events probably. F- Is this your first show? Is your first gig? Nah, not first. I've played, like, a few. but trying First to- one here. Oh, first one here, for sure, yeah. Sick. 100%. How, how are you finding Perth, though, mate? Because... A lot of people talk a lot of shit about Perth, but and especially someone who's been living in Gold Coast and Sydney, I'd love to know your opinion. Man, I love it. I've been coming here for a while. I was here last year in between all the lockdowns for the WSL. Yeah. Or was it 2020? Fuck, I don't know. Everything's so combined. Yeah. But uh, I love it. I haven't done a proper road trip around here though, which is something I really want to do. Yeah. It just feels like a different country. Like same country, but different country. Just because it's so fucking big. It's so far away too. Yeah. Like I want to... Like, go to Melbourne and it's four hour flight. Whereas for you in Sydney, and what's an hour and a half? Yeah. Like, flight down to Melbourne or. That's the thing, bro. I feel like people with like Melbourne, Sydney, Brizzy, they're all just going to those like little areas just fucking. Because, like you said, it's an hour away. But for us, it's a big thing, bro. Yeah, it's like a hol- full blown holiday. People over <laughs> there, they're like, oh, yeah, going to Europe. Where? What do, us, what do we do? <laughs> going to Melbourne, bro, for a fucking yeah. holiday. But you guys are quick to Bali, though. Yeah, that is yeah, Bali. Like three hours to Bali. Yeah, you, you go love, to Bali a lot. Yeah. Or? He, he love loves Bali. Bali yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I remember your place. videos, like on YouTube, back like in Bali and back things like day, that. Before like, I became washed up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> turn it up, turn it, bro. I feel like so. Are you in Bali like during our winter? Is that is that what you Mostly, love to do? Yeah, it's I, like I because I love surfing, and in winter the swells are the, be- are the best here. So it's like, I want to go to Bali, get like the sun, yeah. but also get the waves of being back home. Yeah. So it's mm. like just trying to juggle both. But Bali is so, so, so good. I spent um, like a month and a half there a couple months ago. Damn. It's great. Where are you DJing when you go to Bali? Because I've seen, I've seen you DJ over there. Some places in Canggu and um, one place in Seminyak. It was really fun. But um, trying to get just everywhere in Asia next year. So mm. I'm working on a lot of music at the moment and planning next year and hopefully want, want to tour Asia. So that's kind of big plan that's exciting bro well we don't want to turn this into an interview but i do think it would be like like it wouldn't make sense for us not to go back to like where why you started where you started um so i do have some notes but like basically what what do you want to say mate i was going to say that i i saw that you first became viral for making a video where you like were standing next to a fake shark or something bro that's how you blew up yeah is this true contributor for sure (laughs) early i was in school man and i was like I love doing long paddles in the harbour and um, in Sydney. And funny enough, I broke my leg back then too. I fucking break my <laughs> shit all the time. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm on crutches twice a year, hands down. Fuck. But this time I was doing a lot of paddling and my friends at the time were saying, kind of crazy, there's all these bull sharks in the harbour, which there is. And like, I am scared of them. Like, don't want to fucking get eaten, but you just got to, you know, you chances are very slim. Yeah. So I was still paddling. And one time I was just holding my GoPro because I, I sometimes see dolphins and seals. And I decided, I just took a selfie and I was like, fuck, it'd be so funny if I just photoshopped a shark in. Yeah. So my, my friend, Alex, at the time, who was at my when I got home, 
we just played around with it and first photo of a great white on Google, we put it on the in this fucking photo <laughs> and it looks so real, man. And we're back round two. Do we start from the start or we just keep rolling? No, we just just keep rolling. Um, What what were we saying? What was I saying? About much the shark shark story. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cut off, but we're back now. And I was paddling in the harbour, took a photo of the shark, went home to my friend, he photoshopped the shark in and it literally fucking blew up overnight, man. I swear I was tripping the next morning when I woke up and I saw the Mad Hueys reposted it. And at the time, they're obviously still dope, but at the time they were like pinnacle of like content, like funny shit. So they reposted it. Then all the news started emailing me and I went to school that day and it just like rolled, rolled, Spiral, rolled, yeah. rolled. And then the next day I couldn't, like, I didn't go to school because everyone like kind of, it was just a, a big fucking deal at the time. It was crazy. How many years yeah, ago was this? I, can... I was in year 12. So 2015. Shit. Yeah. That's, that's, so, that's probably when I first, that's when I first heard first about it. Or maybe it was in 2014. I don't know. When, when that happened, were you like, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're back. The uh, the angle's changed. This is like nightmare right now. Fox. Both both batteries, somewhat cooked. Cameras cooked. We're using Alex's GoPro, so <laughs> absolute dubs coming in clutch. But here you, we are. You said that because um, I remember us speaking on our show. I think you for for whatever reason brought it up, saying, "Oh yeah, Alex is playing at this uh, day daybreak event," mm. and we're like, "Oh yeah, like that'd actually be sick." And then all of a sudden, bro, three days later, I'm in my uni class. And this cunt's spamming me with phone calls. And I'm like, fuck's going on? I was like, that made me sound like such a fan, bro. Fuck, <laughs> no, bro. bro. I, was, I was like, I'm not buddy, sure long has, buddy just got, has Buddy just got T-boned or something? <laughs> like, I sent him a message. I'm like, mate, I can't answer the phone. What's going on? He goes, Alex fucking hates me. <laughs> and I said, man, surely not listen to the show, bro. But apparently your friend. Yeah. What's her name? Ali. Ali, Ali Shield. Shout out. It's so funny. Oh, oh, I know exactly who you're yeah, talking about. You might know her. Fuck, there you go. Yeah, yeah, she does like um photography as well. Yeah, she's really talented. You guys would heavily align with that. Yeah, she's a friend from back home, and she said that um, oh, when are you going to Perth? These guys are doing podcasts. Just shouted you out, and I'm like, oh no way! And so she sent me the clip and um the time, and I listened to them. I'm like, that's fucking sick. You sound like legends. Like, let's do it. We yeah, will. I um, just messaged you just then and there. Yeah. <laughs> We Mid should, uni class. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Ali because we'll have to go into Sydney and get her on as well, mate. Because she's got a fucking very successful business going on over there. Yeah, Does she's she crushing not? it. She's crushing it. Love uh, when people just do what they want to do and make a living out of it. Eh? It's, it's fun, bro. It's really cool. The, crea- the creative like industries are great, bro. And I feel like all the people in creative industries, like photography, film, whatever, are always such sick people. Like I walked in, when we walked back down to go get the equipment to bring up here, I said to Dill, I said, bro, it's just... You go and dap up like people who are in this industry and whatever, and everyone's just such vibes, man. Like you don't get just an absolute dickhead. I'm sure you do, but everyone's just so haven't. nonchalant, though. That's what, like yeah. we, like we walked in, bro, and you were just on the bed, didn't even know we we're here, and like your three other mates, just like, oh yeah, like kind of didn't even know you were coming up, but yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Blah like, blah 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 blah, and just got welcomed straight away. Funny thing is, I I only just met all of those guys. So really? You didn't even know yeah. them. Oh, and they're <laughs> legends. That's what I'm saying. Right, everyone... I feel like it's like a mutual respect thing. Everyone's like, oh, like you must be doing something fun. Like, if you're, you know... See, energy up here. radiates. And yeah, I don't know. It's comes, good. Comes Do you travel solo a lot or is it just like... Most of the time, yeah. Well, I'll travel with friends as much as I can because that's fun. But um, yeah, I just love traveling solo. Yeah. Where's next after Perth? Going to Fiji next week. Been there before? Yes. A couple of times. It's fucking so sick, man. I'm, I'm DJing a, uh, like a schoolies event. Oh, true. What in Fiji? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what does Fiji Fiji's... have a school like a leave? Yeah, us? they got. It's got Unleashed. It's really sick. It's. I actually went there for my school. Isn't now I'm DJ, which is fucking really cool. But um. Wait, yeah. you you passed up on Gold Coast Levers? Yeah, dude. Well, I was oh. underage. Not that it really. Matters, oh yeah. yeah. True. Like, you worked. I, I, could, I don't yeah. know actually if we can say that. We won't say that. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> Fiji Levers. How was that? It That's was fun. A... It was like because I'm a surfer and love to adventure, so it's just the perfect. Ticked all the boxes for me. Yeah. Brought like 10 of my friends and we had a sick place. It was actually really sick. I'm excited, excited to go back. Not yeah, as that'd a schoolie. Be, just a yeah, no. <laughs> that'd be, yeah. <laughs> I went here, to Tully's one now. year here, eh? Hey. Oh, dude. We went down because my mates, girlfriends, they were a year younger than us and we went to Tully's. It's kind of different. Like, you feel, you feel old even though I was 18 still. But like, I was underage for our leavers. <laughs> 18 for Tuli. Making me feel like a real creep right now. Because <laughs> well, you're 24, hey. Yeah. Yeah. See, 25 next year. Bro, you've got. You're like, still so young, though, man. You've got like one of the best mindsets I've ever seen, bro. Like even with your injury that you just like, 
awful timing for yourself. Like it's you're never just about good to go. You, yeah, it's never good timing. But like you're about to go to Fiji, like you said, you're just over here. How do you like always stay so positive, bro? Because like you, that's look at your smile right now. You just like spread that such good energy. And I like I said before, that. like it is contagious as fuck. Those are the people you want. Those are the people you want to be around. For How sure. do you do it, bro? It's a good question. I don't know, man. Just like it's just a personal choice. You yeah. Just whatever lens you decide to put on that day. Yeah, it's but true. But just like there's plenty of things that you can be grateful about in this life. Like it comes. Like, I'm very lucky and very fortunate that I've been able to travel a fair bit. So I've I, I've seen the less fortunate cultures mm. and communities. So to really get my life into a perspective when people are so happy with little, it's like, wow, I'm so fucking lucky and spoiled. Like, but every day should be a dream. I went to a TED talk and it's, I think it was this guy, um, his name was Hugh, and uh, he, he said he went to India. Like Is where Hugh, uh, Hugh Vandenberg? Yeah. Hugh Vandenberg? Can't yeah, I Vandenberg. can't pronounce his yeah, last yeah. name. He's from the Imperfects. And he said um, he went to India. Project. Yeah, yeah. And he went there and um, he saw like a bunch of these kids and there was this one kid who was just ecstatic, bro. And he had like, he had like one shoe that was normal and then one shoe that was like half of his foot. And he was like, this, <laughs> this. And he was saying this, but he was, whenever he said like this, he was saying like, look, I've got shoes on my feet. Mm. And it just like opened his eyes up to like how like petty we are yeah. when it comes to, you know, the little like inconvenient inconvenient things that happen in our life compared to a little kid in India who's grateful that he's got one shoe on his yeah, foot. It's crazy. Yeah, it no, is crazy. It's bro. actually insane. He's coming back, by the way. I highly recommend to we go um we go listen. Yeah. Mm. What's uh What's the rest of your summer got planned? Anyway, are yes, you like are you back to back to Sydney straight away? Yeah, so I'm back to Sydney on Tuesday. Where all the boys we're cruising and fishing tomorrow. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. My plan is to go and heal this leg as quick as I can and just yeah. like just rest it and then train it um go to fiji which i won't be doing much resting and training but <laughs> yeah and then um and then i'm going to hawaii the, in january sorry i'm just telling to do to shut the door because that like the bass is going the, on, man. they're turning up the bass where i'm like that's just going to be like in the background i love these podcasts where you just make it fucking happen oh, yeah that's for crazy sure. how much more quiet it is yeah no it's yeah i was like I feel like they turned up the music for sure. I was like, yeah, that's they that's did. definitely going to pick up. Yeah. Um, well, we've been going for three hours, bro. So, like, or well, the event has been, so... I thought you were say on the pod, man. Like, no, no. 24 minutes, mate, on that. <laughs> no, no, it's starting to fucking get a little bit rowdy here. How did, like, did Ben approach you for this? Yeah, so they hit me up on Instagram or email, I think. And I sent it off to my um, agent. And then there was a, they were going to only be able to do it in February. Mm. Like, fuck, like, I'm not kind of here January most of next year and I really wanted to come so we just like pushed for it to be soon made it happen yeah, happen. yeah. No, it was legend. good because I saw the event pop up and it was kind of out of nowhere just on Facebook so Facebook's doing its thing for them and I was like oh like that's when I said on the pod oh Alex Hayes is playing at like daybreak because we were talking about things to do in summer because winter's kind of hibernation season here like Fully. you just kind of uh, like no one's out and about you can't do this in July you know I mean you could but it's cold it'd be freezing <laughs> um, and then I seen I was like oh well fuck it like we should go to that event and then when you dm'd us i was like well now we're 100 going to that event fuck yeah and then ben hit me he's like do you want to dj as well i was like well fucking what yeah of course um so it all worked out beautifully and it's a good day yeah it's gonna be mint i'm pretty keen to play like yeah and go out there to be honest it's a fucking pretty sick opportunity for you just to like me alex and just oh. combine in this like type of atmosphere for sure um can you feel warm up for you can you warm up for you, dude? <laughs> warm up for me. <laughs> I'm a support DJ, actually. You're the headline. Just, qu no. just quietly, I, I have to ask this. I saw you on, um, what's it called? Celebrity Apprentice? Yeah, briefly. Bro, how, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bro I've seen so many jokes about that. Wait, I have to ask, though, because I like... anything, eh? I've watched that show a little bit, and it's actually, like, kind of entertaining. Um, Fucking... How was I never that, watched bro? any episode other than the one I was on. How, bro, <laughs> how, how was the that? The truth. I, I think you got stitched up, bro. Oh, fucking TV, man. Like, <laughs> I had a heap of fun. I, I had like such great experiences and, and everyone on the show I became friends with and I'm still in touch. And I, a few of them are actually coming tonight to the after party, like Dave and Olivia. Even that, even that Martha chick? Martha, dude, she's a legend. We, the, really? the crazy thing was we were friends. Like we were like... We were, we were like good bands on the show and everything, but it's just like... They cut it up? They yeah. fucking... The the, the way they the, the producers or whatever, they just know what's going to happen and they just try to lead things that way, I guess. Well, to it's not be really meant to say this, but like... To be fair though, they put you in a little bit of a shit position at the end. Like you're on a team 
And you literally have to say, who was the shittest cunt on the team? <laughs> and, uh, and then, was he intimidating as well? The main guy, the yeah, boss? Yeah, bro, who I was terrified. Yeah. I felt like I was getting yelled at by my dad for doing stupid shit, which yeah. was a lot when I was a kid. And you were what? You, yeah, this I was like imagine. two years ago, something like that? This was 2020. Yeah. yeah. So it came out in 2021, but it was all filmed in 2020. Uh, it was so fun. And honestly, man, I thought like the two weeks that I was, we filmed for like two weeks mm. and it was like half an hour <laughs> <three Yeah>. time. <laughs> but it was like such a sick experience. And then I will say I was really disappointed with how the show actually turned out to what it was, regardless of the result. Yeah. Because I, I, my whole purpose of going on that show was to try like bring a good sense of positivity and light and like, no, no, trying to spread some consciousness in the world that was fucking struggling. So if you're talking like, to get deep, like how fucked mental health issues oh, are. At the oh moment. man, like, I saw you get on TV and like be an example. I saw you chose your charity of choice. Yeah. It was uh, mental health related. Yeah, well, that that was my whole my whole purpose behind it was to try to share that message and um, be a good example, influence for bettering mental health. And they just didn't put anything in. Like there was, we had yeah. we had such good interviews, moments, and there was so many good opportunities as a national TV network to shine a light on a dark subject, and yeah. they fucking ruin everything. Don't put a single thing on there. And just like cutting sentences halfway through, and it was, I'm roasting them right now. <laughs> I shouldn't I mean, be doing this. But I think like, them, it was like, it was upsetting, man. Was yeah, like, you no, need 100%. to make a positive change, and they didn't do it. I think that's um, TV has to be negative, or like negative stuff correlates well with for drama TV. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, particularly with I mean, look at every real, like Love Island and things like I've heard from people that they twist the absolute they like, do. everything out of that, and they portray one person as like the villain who's being such a dick 24 seven, but like if people didn't know you and they portrayed you in a bad light, people would think you're a dickhead. But if people who know you would be like, what is like, this isn't him, Yeah, you know? Cause yeah. everyone's going to have at least like five minutes in a day where they do something where they're like, nah, you or do the dickhead thing. Hmm. It's like, if they just show that, then what? You're cooked. It's disappointing so, though, because the whole point of the show is to raise money for your given charity. Mm, through like right. the business I, venture. I, I get it though. And, I'm like, it was such a sick opportunity. It's so yeah. fun. Um, numbers game, bro. Numbers game, man. Because <laughs> aren't, you aren't you like a co-ambassador of an um, organization that's yeah, around mental here. health? Uh, and also my, one of my best mates, Cooper Chapman, he's got a really good um, business at the moment called the Good Human Factory, mm. which is all like building resilience, which is everything I believe in. And, and I've got a um, brand called The Daily Living, which I started like six years ago or something. Yeah. Just showing the finer things of life, finer things about like nature, like going out, you don't, you know, don't necessarily need money, but it's like you just need the motivation to go out and make something for yourself. Um, fuck, I have ADHD. I forgot what I was talking about. Daily living. Well, I was going to ask you about your, your brand, Daily Living, because yeah. I remember seeing it pop up like with your content back. I think, you know the set you did? Um, I think it's your house. It's like lives on that yeah. lake where the beach That's is. That's such yeah. a nice house, by the, the way. Ha oh, that so that house music set, low key kind of, um, like I went... That was when I first started DJing and I downloaded like all the songs you played. Sick. Literally the whole the whole thing. So, Amazing, yeah. YouTube um, fucking took, I think, some of the songs down. Oh, really? Oh, I think the video is still up there, but they've had to take a song or two down. Yeah, right. Labels. But yeah, so that was, I was going to ask you like, how, why did you start The Daily Living? And then also, how is that going for you? Like, Thank you. Yeah, it, I just kind of, um, I actually started it just to be like a second Instagram of just my daily life, mm. selfishly. And then, as it kind of grew a following and I was sharing a lot more activities and more of my friends, um, <laughs> it just turned into more of a community and building a community around action sports and adventure and like, like positive lifestyle and like health, how, like trying to be healthy in a world where everything's kind of unhealthy. Yeah. It's like pick your poisons, but you know, you can do things that make your life way better every single day, just little, little efforts. And that was my motive behind turning it into a more of like a business like community was just to try and make a difference. Mm. Like, not trying to sound cliche, but is I have such a good opportunity to share to a, a lot of people, and I can make a good difference. So, like, why aren't I? So yeah, facts. Hundred percent, bro. You got Love a platform it. there. A lot of people use their platform for the wrong reasons, and it's good to see that you're fucking doing the complete opposite, really. Yeah, just trying. And just on the complete polar opposite, Seltzer Company is where I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, Seltzer World's crazy, man. Bro, it's people are all over that, especially come summertime. It's like the the preferred choice these days. Yeah, seltzer really? over over a beer for sure nowadays. Yeah. Vacay seltzer. Vacay, yeah. How is that? Good how did fun. that start, bro? That was I got approached in 2020 um, just to be a part of it, and I I was sober for ages, 
in I started in 2018 and I was sober for like a year and a half. Mm. And I kind of started fucking sending it at the end of 2019. DJ Did life. that happen accidentally? <laughs> Did that like the sober, like becoming nah, sober? It was, or was a, a it was like choice. a conscious choice. Like I just I just wanted to. Like I I'm 110 percent in whatever I do, mm. and unf- unfor- uh, fortunately and unfortunately because I've had some of the best experiences and I'm not like against it, but it's just for me I will just go over the top. And like when I party, I'll just go so hard. I'm like, fuck, I can't keep doing this. If it's I hard like to maintain. I want to be in this scene forever. So I'm trying to like separate it. Yeah. So that was, are you sober right now? Yeah. 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 Cause I saw, I think I saw you post something about like, I've been sober for such I've and such. I've though. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. No. Yeah, exactly right. But I saw Steve. Is that allowed to be said? Yeah. Legally wise? Like you can't get in trouble for that? No, you, you actually, can, you can get medicated weed in Australia. Okay. Well, anyway. Because <laughs> I saw Stevie Oak, he said the same thing. Yeah, he doesn't. He stopped drink drinking he as well. Then, yeah. And that must be so tough when you're in like bro, this this environment. You look down there and people are going absolutely bananas, and like drinking is just like the ma- main foundation of this event itself. Well, I don't know about you, but when I'm playing, I like to do something in between like songs. Yeah, oh, it's so a reflex. Right? I used to have a drink here, like even when I'm just at home on a live on TikTok. I'll be just playing and I'll have, I'll literally grab a can and the can will be gone in like three minutes because like every now and then I'm just, I just take don't it even out know and, I, and I, it fires me up. You know, like it's just what you do. It's a habit. Yeah. And like, it's a reflex because you're like kind of nervous on stage. You know, people look at yeah. you. So you need to always be doing something. hundred <laughs> percent. Cause <laughs> people, there's no buttons to press. There's drinks to drink. <laughs> let drinks to drink. Exactly. And then as well, like if things like drinks are free, it's like, that yeah. makes it hard to feel and then, bad when you say no yeah exactly people are like oh do a shot it's like fuck all right like why not like and then you want to do a shot oh, all right like it gets it gets like you can get drunk really quick i remember yeah. playing at metros with like all the boys on the stage mm. <laughs> mate i was <laughs> literally the last five minutes of the set i could barely see i literally was like thank god this is ending like, i can't do this again like i don't know how much i drank up on that stage but you boys were feeding me out no we got like bar card central bro, and we yeah, yeah yeah took well advantage of that <laughs> yeah which was probably a mistake on your behalf not, not yeah, my you behalf because i find to get all I, the was stuff. Like, I was <laughs> it was brutal man how is it though when you like travel solo because surely like like you said when you went on leave is you took your boys with you mm-hmm. it's so much more fun when you're doing something when you've got, when you're in the position you are to bring your friends along with you i know there's a Always. lot of people that for whatever reason, they're like, no, I'm in this position of like power or like clout or whatever. I'm, I don't want to bring anyone along. You like love to bring your friends along. For sure, man. It's like, it's no point, you know, if you're... It's not fun if you're by yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, on the other side of that statement, it, it is like, you got to be completely okay yeah. with being alone, which is something I really learned last year because I've always been around people. I love people a lot. Like, mm. I love hanging out with people doing fun shit. And I kind of like became dependent on it to a sense of like when I was alone, it felt weird because I always loved to be around people. Yeah. So, but then I, I started living completely alone and it was fucking great to just kind of like be completely sweet with being alone. And I love traveling alone now and going, I can, I never used to like four years ago, never used to be able to just go sit in a cafe alone because I'm like scared people looking yeah. at me and shit. Yeah, no, I thrive with that. I'm like, I'm fucking alone. Anything can come my way and I'm stoked. I'll take it on. Well, it must be pretty hard to like go from one extreme where you've got everyone around you like saying your name and then to have like a massive come down and like you said, be your house all by yourself and to be okay with that. Yeah. That must have taken some extreme getting used to, right? For sure. Especially when you're on injury as well. Like it's, it'd be so easy to like kind of go down. Yeah, well, it's the life we live, though. It's ups and downs. So it's, it's a roller coaster, yeah. you know? But it's just Stop like when you on. are in those low points, just know that the highs are coming and you just like just ride with it. you got to feel it. I'd love to throw this back to like six years ago when you first started filming because I remember you went to like, America because, I mean, even like the people you've met, like where did, like firstly, why did you want to start mm-hmm. um, f- like making content or did it just you just started making it and it started taking traction? which is probably what I think it would be. Yeah. Um, and question. then <laughs> when did you decide that it was just like, all right, I'm going to make this a, a job and a career. Um, mm. And then obviously knowing that you don't have to work a nine to five is got to be like one of the best things of all time. Yeah, man, it's very lucky. But I, I did used to, I worked a few jobs but, well, as I was kind of starting out. But yeah, I just was sharing what I love to do on social media. I was actually kind of bullied through school like, like pretty badly. And social media just came my kind of like outlet to just, share more of me and be accepted to a community of people I didn't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. But it turned out to just bring momentum and then I just kept doing it and 
Like, yes, yeah, still getting like bullied and shit. People didn't, you know, at that time, if you're doing social media, even today, but now it's more accepted. But if you're doing it back in the day, people just try to bring you down, bring you down, bring you down. But I kind of got some momentum and then I started getting random little jobs. Like I was in school and I was working in a cafe, like cleaning dishes. I was also working for Manly Seagulls merchandise, like oh, working oh, at the games true. too. Like I was at the, at the stores, like selling all the merchandise. And then the next day in the, in the kitchen, like fucking cleaning up rubbish and doing all this shit. Like, I was trying to hustle because I just wanted yeah. money to get freedom. And then I started getting jobs for like $150 for an Instagram post. At the time, I'm like, that's a whole day of cleaning fucking dishes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to put some more focus here and see if I can be a bit more strategic around it. And um, as school was finishing up, the momentum just kind of kept building. It was just perfect timing. Like, I'm so lucky. Right place, right time. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that era of... That was like the kind of beginning of Instagram when you... Because you were doing like the travel, like surfing... Mm. Um, like cliff jumping and shit like that um, and it was always so sick and as I think I was probably like 15, 16 and I was like, you look at that and you're like oh I can't do that because like but that was just the lifestyle that you were living whereas mm. like for me I mean, we, did, we just played video games <laughs> I was, I was like, back then just playing video games like like, the, like pretty much I don't want to say that word I'll get in trouble from people <laughs> who do that but no it was it was super sick to see and then yeah at what point did that you were like oh, okay this is going to be full time like I'm just going to do this as my full time job and yeah. go 100 mile an hour it wasn't really like a point it was kind of just i loved it so i was just doing it yep. anyway mm -hmm. and if opportunities could keep coming through me continually doing what i love to do like i was just gonna go hard at it and i was like in terms of putting out content i looked at that so it's kind of like a job like i have to edit like i have to get it done follow a type of schedule um just to keep momentum but there was a, a real turning point when i left school and um, I finished school. I actually finished school. I did one time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, and I went to Hawaii. And um, and when I went to Hawaii, I met some people over there who were doing a lot more of um, what I decided to do. Like, and they were killing it. And so it, it, they led a really good example for what's possible in this space of lifestyle and like sharing a certain lifestyle mm. to be a business. And um, then after that, I came home and saved up, got my skydiving license, and then pretty much moved to LA like just straight up I was like fuck like that's the university of life for this world so I'm just gonna go over there and so it's just right place right time man if you take that leap sometimes that you have doubt around yourself if you should do it or not and you do it you will find the most absurd situations that will make your life so much better yeah like, being, I just sorry oh, no you go sorry I sometimes talk a lot <laughs> no no that's but, good I, I was just gonna say being young is um yeah. like would have been so because you were what 20 ish I was, I was like, 17. There you go. So yeah. we're just going to take, like, you got nothing to lose, you know? Yeah, That's kind of where exactly. we're at now. Like, young 20s, like, oh, man, like, we should just send full send it. And How if old it, are you guys? 23. I'm 22, 22 yeah, yeah. Same age. Yeah, dude, we're all so fucking young, man. And we're, we're young till we die, essentially. It's just, like, how you think about it. True. But we are at the age, num numerically, that, like, we have to just fucking try shit. Mm, and facts. we have to fail. The more we fail, the, the one step closer we are to succeeding. Right. I think yep. fucking Rocky said he was like, when did it become cool to not try? I love that like little fucking yeah, comment that, that he man? did. He's so dope. I love that little comment. And it's just like stuck with us. Like you said, like this is the one thing I'll give props to like working a shit job. Mm. Makes you want to fucking get out there and fucking attack whatever you're passionate about. That's the one thing I'll give props to like yeah, we, shit jobs, bro. We both pack boxes in a warehouse like <laughs> twice a week, man. And, oh. I remember, bro. Good, we'll, man. Dude. Take it all in. Soak it in because it's not going to happen forever. Yeah, it's just brutal, that's, a, that's another thing we said, bro. Like, have you, have you seen The Office before? No, I've seen like bits of it. You got to get oh, onto that. Bro. If you watch, Everyone's if you want telling me that at the moment. It's a great TV show, show like, bro. 20 minute episodes. I, I you can just first, first, second, uh, first season's dodgy, bro. But once you get past that, Fucking phenomenal. But there's a quote. I, I love quotes, bro. I'm a fucking weirdo for quotes. But he said, I wish there was a, a way to know that you're in the good old days. And it's so true, bro. Because like, as we get older, I don't know if like your friends are the same, but a lot of our friends are going different pathways, whether it be a nine to five or mm. this or that. And they can't always do what you want to do, for example, like being here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have loved all the lads to be here, bro, but um couldn't busy they couldn't Life but it's fast man it gets yeah. busy and like it gets filled up with responsibilities but if you take a step back like i still got this guy to the, to the left hand side of me and you still got like a person here you still in this opportunity so you sort of just got to be grateful for what you have right now 100 percent. that's what i fucking try and realize every time when one of the boys is like nah i don't want to go out i'm like fuck it if you can get two or three, three of us bro. yeah we still got three of us it's not what you can't do it's what you can do so how long were you in la for then I was back and forth, kind of like 
doing three months there and then coming home for a couple of weeks and going back. I was just, I love life over there. I kind of created like a, it was like I was living the fucking Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana life for a bit. It was crazy. Though. Yeah, it would have been insane. Like, it was insane, man. It was Because you would have been dream. with the other influencers as well. Yeah, I was with some, I hate being the person that name drops, but I was just with some of the most craziest people ever that I would look at, like put on such a pedestal and I'd be next to them and they're just, just a normal normal, person. Like, yeah. Sharing yeah. A drink. I remember once, oh, I fucking hate name dropping, but it's just for perspective. I, I remember sitting next to Kendall Jenner at a club drinking for like four hours True. just because I had an Australian accent. She's like, oh, Ozzy. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, and I was like 18, man. Yeah. And like I just like a year ago that day, I was getting bullied at school for doing this shit. And then now I'm fucking sitting next to Kendall Jenner and drinking with her and she's like treating me like a normal human. Yeah. 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 It's like, that's crazy. crazy. That's insane, the situations yeah. you'll find yourself in, no bullshit. Like if you just take that fucking leave, you'll find yourself in crazy situations. Bro. That's, for, that's for anyone, everyone who sends us message. Oh, should we like? How do I start a podcast? Just do it, man. Yeah, he's like prime example. Just start doing shit, yeah. and if it works, yeah, it takes off. You Snap, never know what could happen. You could Snapchat memories with Kendall Jenner in a club. Snapchat memories. Snapchat are, are memories. Incriminating stuff on there. <laughs> oh yeah, it's bad. <laughs> but yeah, it shows you like we all do. <laughs> bro, I'm, so, I'm here right now. What the fuck was I doing last year? And I'm showing you like. Wow, shit changes fucking quickly, bro. Even the way you look, man. Yeah. Like, holy shit. You go three years ago, I'm like, what? The fuck was it doing my Dude, head? I'd, I would look at myself and be like, loser. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit. But that's probably a good thing because if you look back and you think, oh. You're not embarrassed of yourself. You haven't really grown Yeah, you haven't far. grown as, at all as a person. So. No, that's that's sick. We're going to um, we're gonna record a lot more of today because. Yeah, it's going to be a good, yeah, good day. Yeah, vlog it. Be, this fucking thing be extremely rude it's not to. And then, yeah, um, and then even tomorrow at Fisher, we might get some content out and uh, I'm sure we'll bump into you again, bro. Yeah, but 100%. Thanks yeah. for coming on, mate. It's been, thanks for the voice crack No, I well. do want to talk one more. Just, you want to you you say something? You yeah, like, I got time. I'm about to probably DJ soon, but I'll go. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was going to talk to you about your DJing stuff because we didn't even, yeah, we didn't even get into that because that yeah. probably, what, two, three years ago you, you started from what I, what I can yeah. envision. That's kind of when I, I've always loved, I had tractor decks when I was like fucking 12 and I was on virtual DJ. The day that I heard Martin Garrix Animals, yeah. the day I downloaded Virtual DJ and I had this obsession, like one day I'm going to do it. And yep. then life kind of had its own course and I just went my way and um, gratefully it, it went that way. And then it kind of got to this point where I was a bit bored. Like I was living the life and grateful as fuck, but I was just like, I want to switch it up and music's a real core cool passion of mine and I want to create music because it's like opportunities are limitless. And so I started DJing a bit more and more more producing, which is what I'm really excited about for the future is producing and like sharing music that comes from me and and getting it in movies and making movies and then, then getting to travel and perform and meet really cool people like yourself and continue also Thanks, doing sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, continuing sure. sports and I'm fucking obsessed with hydroflowing. That's like that's what I love at the moment. With what? what? Hydrofoiling. What is that? Real weird. Oh, is that the, like the surfboard things that yeah. like you just kinda go up and down like with it's, your feet? It's just the best thing in the world, dude. Fuck, we'll have to come to Sydney, mate. And they'll we will 100% have to come to Sydney. There's no excuse, bro. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> zero that excuse. would be yeah, sick. Cause I, I'll look after you guys there. Well, because you, you do water sports. And when I was younger, I used to like wakeboard, sick. like skiing. Like basically every weekend from the age of like 12 to 16, we used to go camping down. Because we have got like some lakes, like an hour and a half uh, south. And yeah, I used to fucking go every weekend. So it'd be so sick to like yeah, come out and do that shit. Wakeboarding. Yeah, fuck. Oh, I, I, I want to try that skim, whatever. What did you say? Hydrofoiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that looks insane. Is it where it's got like the, like the fucking Little stand fins. underneath it type yeah. of yeah, thing? Yeah, you're above the water. You're essentially yeah. flying. It like doesn't make sense. I, <laughs> I, I, I can't comprehend the actual logistics around, or, like the science around how it fucking works, but it works and it feels amazing. I see so many people eat so much shit on yeah, it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, really, it's really hard. It is dangerous too. Like someone fucking died. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah. That, that came off so insensitive your feet are clipped in aren't you so if you no, got you can you can have them clipped in or you can't have them clipped in but if that f the foil it's really mm. sharp if it hits you like the, it hit this poor person oh, in the neck and like oh, cut an artery and fucking killed him but jesus that's wow. insane where was um, that i don't know just saw it. I actually don't know. Saw but it kept could be swiping. Bullshit. Someone told me. Yeah, I don't know. Let's hope <laughs> it nah, is I'm, bullshit. I'm reliable, reliable source. Trust me, bro. I saw it Trust on TikTok. Me, <laughs> yeah, fuck. No, nah, but like the DJing thing is because I was the same. I Martin Garrix was always. I still want to see him live, but I always was like, I want to do like get into DJing. And I, I mean, you probably would have heard me at work. I was always like, oh, I want to do it, bro. And then I finally just bought like DDJ 400s, like the 400 dollars nice. decks. And I was like, fuck it. And then just fell in love. Like yeah, three fun, months man. later, I bought really like fun. bigger decks. And then, yeah. And then probably a year ago, it was like the first actual 
event, but trying to go in, like trying to get way more involved with like doing events so you can make it more of a job rather than just production wise as well. That's something you're trying to do. Well, just I haven't started yet, but I will event, for man. sure. Just like do have like a monthly podcast where you do it in an environment where people can come watch and then have a little DJ set there and just start from there. Yeah, and see where it goes. we did throw one event like a year ago now. But we can't really get into too much of what we want to do. But there will be more events coming, like a big event. We want to throw yeah, an excited. Maybe we'll get Alex in. We'll <laughs> we'll I'll, I'll warm you up. I'll Rude warm you up. not to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your just Put him on it. You don't have your name all over it, bro. You're not warming up anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, well, trying to, we're trying to fucking throw a potential Christmas party as well. Bro. Yeah. We love, and this guy's got the backyard for it, man. Yeah. He's got a bunt of house. And then you can do your decks. It was a brilliant idea. Oh, you should throw. we should throw a party. Where do you want to do it? Your house. Oh, yeah. Of course you do, mate. It's perfect, mate. Is there anything else you wanted to ask, big man? Nah, I'm pretty keen. We're about to go out there. So I'm actually very keen to go down there. Feels like I'm. The music's been bumping on me. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really fine. But nah, um, shout out to to Alex Hayes here. Shout Do out, you, Alex. You got a new song out, don't you? The XI? It's not uh, that new, but... Yeah, it's a year old, but it's still new in this oh. broad spectrum. Of you got any new music coming out? Yes, next year, man. I'm fucking really pumped. I'm sitting on like 12 songs. True. And next year, hopefully, just trying to release like every six weeks with a music video and like have it done properly. Killer. Yeah. Yeah. So get get keen for that. I'm pretty keen for that because it's what like, it's like housey yeah. vibes. Yeah, it's like journey music. I don't know, just trying yeah. to yeah makes you feel a certain way. I don't know how to put a label on it. I love the start of XI music video where you're just talking, bro. It just set it up perfectly. My Sick. Life. I I appreciate that a lot because I was a bit like iffy of if I should put that in. I was like, nah, fuck it. Nah, it no, was it was fire. cool. It was very I'm defi- cool. I'm definitely keen to um to stay in touch with you as well. Yeah, so 100%. We'll, we'll we'll start some stuff in the future. But appreciate you coming on, mate. Hope Thank you fucking you. enjoyed. Follow him. You probably already do. And if you don't follow us, just follow us as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <why not? laughs> All right. See you later. Adios. Yep.